All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me in this Kia Sorento as I go to collect a Volkswagen EOS that I bought for just £1,200. And to be honest with you, the price is the only thing I know about it. I know in these kinds of videos, you always think it's weird that I would buy a car without seeing it first, a car that I haven't researched properly or even seen, but it's just the way that I work. I buy loads of cars every month and they're usually in a batch of four or five or six and I have to have them all. So there'll be a couple of cars that I really want, then there'll be a couple that I'm ambivalent about, then there'll be two that I really don't want. Annoyingly, it's always the ones that I don't want which always seem to sell first. And that always confirms to me that even after doing this job for so long, I know precisely nothing. I always work on the theory that three of them will get me good profit, two of them will do okay, and then the other one or two will either break even or take a small loss. You've just always got to look at the bigger picture. Anyway, today's car, which I didn't really want, is an old EOS. Actually, I say old, it might not be that old. I'm only guessing it's old because of the low price. I'm on my way there now to go and walk around it and see if there's any profit in it. Fingers crossed there is, otherwise it's just a wasted exercise. I should tell you right off the bat, I'm not a big fan of the EOS. I've had a few over the years and all of them have caused me headaches. Like Leonard Rossiter, they're famous for rising damp. Sorry, that was the corniest joke I've ever told. But seriously, the roofs always leak and they always have damp, soggy carpets and mouldy seat belts and a dank, horrible, rank smell. Apart from that, they're okay if it's a two litre diesel manual. The DSGs are rubbish, as is the petrol, it burns oil. So I'm just praying that it's a two litre diesel manual that's been garaged its whole life. Should have brought a mask, shouldn't I really? Rather than inhale all this mould, which I know will be there. Anyway, got to stay upbeat, haven't you, in this job? I will see you when we're there. Right guys, moment of truth. I've just pulled up on the car park and there it is. Well, that looks all right, you know. It's black, it's a sport model, I would guess, with those wheels. It's a C plate, so that is Wales, I think, isn't it? Yeah, Wales. Oh, it's got a National Trust sticker. That means full history, two cam belts. The whole lot. Oh, it's got red interior as well. You know what, this just gets, oh, we've got a flat tire. That's the car job for you, isn't it? Give with one hand, take with the other. Needs a good wash. Silver leaf cars, wherever they are. Right, let me do a car history check. So as always, I'm gonna use a company called Car Vertical. And this just checks to see if it's ever been involved in any accidents, whether or not it's got outstanding finance on it, all that sort of stuff. So all you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, Charlie Papa 09, kilo, kilo, x-ray, check vehicle. This is gonna check for mileage rollbacks, vehicle service history, theft records. This is currently checking databases in dozens of countries. By the way, if you click the link below in the video description, I've done a deal with Car Vertical, so you'll get 10% off each and every check that you do. All you need to do is click the link below and use the promo code HIGHPEAK and you'll get 10% off. Right, the report is ready, so view report. So the mileage hasn't been tampered with, it's never been stolen, never been involved in any accidents, and there's no outstanding finance. So we're all clear. It was manufactured in May 2009, it had maintenance in June 2009. First registered in June, so that must have been a PDI. Right, so let's see if it's got any MOT then. In 2012, there was an advisory item because the bonnet pull was missing on the three-year-old car. That's a bit strange. Let's go all the way down to the bottom then, see if it's got any test on it whatsoever. So the last one was done in October last year, so it's got a month MOT. I wonder why they traded that in. Near side front suspension pin bush worn. Near side rear tyre worn, close to legal limit. Near side rear suspension arm corroded and offside front suspension arm pin or bush worn but not resulting in excessive movement. Let's see the mileage then. So it done 96,000 miles at its last MOT. Well, that's not even particularly high, is it? So it estimates that today's mileage will be about 104. So we'll find out. And it is clear in all those countries. This is a result, you know, actually. So it's a Volkswagen EOS convertible 2009, 2010 model year. 2 litre turbo diesel with 103 kilowatt. I don't know how that translates in brake horsepower. It also shows you all the optional extras. Right, enough of that then. Let's go and have a look around it. Right, well, we've got two keys, which is a good start. 
Neither of them work though, which isn't a good start. Right, so we'll do the exterior first then. The wheels are a bit scabby and we've got a Motion, RX Motion tyre there, never heard of it, but it's on about five mil, so that's good. The bodywork, I know it's filthy, so it's hard to tell, but the bodywork looks a bit scruffy and is a good buff. There's a dent there where somebody's opened it onto a wall. The wing mirror is broken. Again, another scabby alloy. That's a Pirelli on the front, Pirelli P0, but it looks very old. I was just trying to work out the age of the tyre from the date stamp, but the sidewall's really worn. Oh, there we go. 47.17, so the 47th week of 2017. So it's a five-year-old tyre. Scabby wheel arches, that's standard VW. National Trust sticker. Is that? I think there's Xenon lights, because I think that's the headlamp washer. We've got front fog lights. And I think it's been a while since I've had one of these, but I think that's the sport model with that bigger grill. So it's not a bad looking thing. Lots of, I would say, I know this is a Wales car or Welsh car, but I would say it's come from a rural area because you can see the little marks on the bodywork where it's brushed past hedges and stuff. We've got an odd tire here. This is a Axe Trek. Yeah, with about three mil of tread on and it, Obviously a puncture because it's low. Another wheel that wants refurbing there. Bit of damage there, but nothing major. Some marks here on the rear panel. I think that most of that would buff back. You could touch that in. Have we got a matching tire? We've got a sport control. No. So we've got four odd tires on this car. So it just shows you it hasn't been maintained well. Nobody puts four odd tires on a car. Moving around the back, the lights are all in good order. We've got rear parking sensors. Is that a, we've got a pan roof as well. It's quite a good spec this. This must've been some car in its day. Unfortunately though, it's had its day. Just airing it out for a second. <laughs> Actually doesn't smell damp. It smells dirty, but not damp. Might have found the only EOS here without a leaking roof. We've done 102,000 miles. That's not too bad. You know, this is a really good spec. We've got heated leather seats. Oh, that's not good. The barrel end felt really weird. I had no resistance then when I put the key in. We're overdue a service, surprise, surprise. Yeah, there's no, look at that. There's no resistance on the, on the barrel. How strange. But then there we go, right. Quarter tank of diesel. From the sounds of it there, we've got a noisy flywheel. So straight away we're into 800 pounds for a new clutch and flywheel. This is gonna be what they call a uneconomical repair. We've got a broken glove compartment there and no service book. Not exactly off to a flying start, are we? Let's see if the roof works. That flywheel's making a racket. We've got the low tire pressure warning light on. Surprise, surprise. Well, the windows have dropped, but then that's it. No. Oh, hang on. That was, was that an operator error or no? Right. Oh dear. It's jammed. It's jammed. Oh, that sounds horrible. Oh, uh, what an absolute lemon. Let's give it a hand, shall we? There we go. There we go. 
It's got a semi-auto roof, just needs a little bit of a helping hand. Well, this, unfortunately, I thought it had a little bit going for it, but it turns out it does not. All the windows work, they're on the bright side. Well, I really don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Straight away, you could spend 1,500 pounds on it. Let's see what they were listening to. History, man after my own heart. Who did you choose? That means it's got DAB, which is good. And it's also got sat nav. This car's really just worth more in parts, but you could get 500 quid for the interior. That's definitely a dual mass flywheel. Right, let's have a look under the bonnet. Oh, no, not so fast. <laughs> this just gets worse, doesn't it? I was gonna give you a tour of the bonnet and see if there's a, a sticker to say it's had its cam belt, but I can't get in there. Well, I'm really not sure what to do with this now. Let's have a look in the boot. Bosch wiper blades, no expense spared there. We've got a space saver spare wheel and some, some damp proof silicon. I bet they've used it on the roof. Couldn't make it up, could you? A padlock, looks like it's been underwater. It probably has actually in the boot of an EOS, hasn't it? And a bit of a broken mirror and a charger. For a Nokia. Well, there's the tour of the boot over. What am I going to do with this? I think I've just fixed that. That might be the cheapest fix in the history of the world. It worked. Right. And no cam belt sticker. I was hoping to find a little sticker here to say cam belt done at 80, but there isn't one. All we've got here is cable ties, which doesn't look like an official VW job, does it? Black oil, but then it's diesel, so you'd expect that. I'm slowly losing interest with this car now. The battery looks fairly new to stay positive. And the strut works. That's the result, isn't it? Right, should we go and get the compressor then and try and pump up the tyre? Then we can take it for a spin and see what it's like. Right, let's take it for a quick spin then. Don't know how long that tyre will last. And the clutch is a bit dodgy, but we'll, we'll try. Don't want to be all defeatist. Mm, Seatbelts smell a bit. Oh, the joys of this job. And we're off. Well, so far I've noticed a wing mirror on the passenger side. The glass is rattling. She's giving me a migraine. Pulls all right though. They drive really well, don't they? The two litre diesel Volkswagen engine and a manual gearbox. They are quite strong. You're gonna try and pull out, aren't you? I'm sorry, pal. Get rid of this thing. Picks up power well as well. I'm genuinely gutted about this, you know, because here's my dilemma. The car's probably worth three grand or maybe three and a half grand. So it just really isn't worth the effort. I could spend 800 pounds on a clutch and dual mass flywheel, a couple hundred pounds on a service, a couple hundred pounds on wheel refurbs, a couple hundred pounds on tires, a couple hundred pounds on paintwork and a buff, 350 on a cam belt. And then before you know it, it owes me three grand and there's no profit, so what's the point? But on the face of it, it's quite a, well, it's not a nice car. This particular one isn't nice at all, but it's got a few things going for it. I like the oxblood leather. I like the fact it's got heated seats, sat nav, parking sensors, xenons, auto lights, two keys, and it's only done 102,000 miles. It's not particularly high, but because used car prices in the UK are just so cheap, it isn't worth fixing. It just seems like a shame, doesn't it? Hmm. 
Anyway, there's nothing really I can do about that, is there? We've got a slight, slight wheel bearing noise there as well. From the, I was gonna say the front, but it sounds like it's going from the rear as well. Maybe multiple wheel bearings. I was really hoping that this was gonna be the EOS that would change my mind about the EOS, and it isn't. I cannot believe a manufacturer as big as VW made something as unreliable as the EOS. Every single one I've had has been like this, with a broken roof, broken windows, broken boots. This has got to be one of the first cars I've ever bought with a National Trust sticker that's been a complete lemon. Usually that National Trust sticker means that it's been owned by somebody called Margaret who doesn't drive above 30 and has it serviced every year at the local garage. That has just fooled me. Yeah. Oh, we've got powerful mirrors as well that work. Well, I don't know what else I can say. It drives okay, apart from wheel bearing noise. The gearbox seems okay. It needs a clutch, but it still works. You could probably get another six months out of it. Mm, what can I do with this? What can I do with it? It's a case of damage limitation now, isn't it? I paid 1,200 pounds. I've just got to hope that I can make profit on the other cars in the batch, and then I'll be okay. I know what I'll do. I'm gonna call a mate of mine who likes to get his hands dirty and see if he wants to do the work to it himself. In theory, if you did this as a hobby on your driveway, you could do all this work for maybe a grand, perhaps. And then, I don't know, try and sell it for two and a half or three. Right, I'm gonna do that. Right, I've just spoken to my mate and I've sold it for a thousand pounds. So there we go. I've lost 200 pounds today. But not the end of the world though, is it? Like I say, hopefully I can make some more profit on the others and then it won't be all bad. Yeah, you can hear that wheel bearing rumble, can't you? It does pull well though, and there's no whistles from the turbo. But I was going onto the phone list and it's been owned by somebody called Roger. It wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting a Pamela or a Vanessa. Didn't check the air conditioning, did I? I don't think that'll work, personally, but... And... I was right. It does not work. Roger, you've just ran this car into the ground, pal. Fooling me with the National Trust membership. If only you'd have serviced it on time and replaced the cam belt and sorted that mirror that's given me a headache. Maybe greased the roof. Maybe kept it undercover. But you didn't and now it's worthless. What sometimes happens when I act in haste like this, when I sell something for a loss, the next day I'll go back to the main dealer and there'll be a full history file on the desk and a spare key and the parcel shelf and everything else. And I'll think, oh, I've just chucked that car away when it actually, if I'd have just waited a day or two, all that history would have developed. 90% of the time that doesn't happen, but it has happened on occasion. You just feel like a bit of an idiot. Still, it's better to move it on, spin the money round, and then try and buy something tomorrow with some profit in. It's not easy, this job, really. It's not easy at all. Well, on that note, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Don't forget to check out Car Vertical and get you 10% off each and every check that you do. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.